after everything you think you know about professional bowling. It's way more than just knocking down pins. It's dynamic. It's explosive. And you're about to see it in a whole new way. I'm an athlete. I'm a competitor. I'm a pro bowler. I'm a pro bowler. I'm a pro bowler. And the PBA is ready to roll right now on Fox. Texas continues today at the home of Team USA. We welcome you to the International Training and Research Center here in Arlington, Texas for this 2019 PBA Hall of Fame Classic. Happy New Year's to you as we welcome you to the first ever live PBA telecast on FS1. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer. Randy Peterson here with you. What a show we have for you today to kick off 2019. We've got lefties. We have power. The number one bowler on the planet. But we begin the show with two guys who are more than happy to turn the page from last year into 2019. Right, you are. And what better name to start with than Rhino Page. 2017 was a phenomenal year for Rhino. He was a top 10 in earnings and average and captured his first major, the U.S. Open. 2018, however, different story as he dropped out of the top 30 in all statistical categories. The Iceman from Sweden, the two-handed southpaw, gets for Svensson again, a phenomenal 2017. But in 2018, five televised finals, zero wins. The winner of that first match will take on Bill O'Neill. And Rob, it seems like it was just yesterday when Bill was on just about every other show, doesn't it? Sure does. Good to have him back. It is. But Bill hasn't won in three and a half years. A win today qualifies him for the Hall of Fame. And then there's this man. He's the guy that sets the bar out here on the PBA Tour. The Aussie, Jason Belmonte. And our number one seed, Jacob Buttrup. What makes him so unique is his unorthodox style and incredible release. Jacob's last win from the same number one position. Rainy, wrists are not supposed to do what they do with Jacob Buttruff. We'll have more on that through our broadcast as we take a look at our stepladder format. We start with Svensson, Page, Bill O'Neill waiting in the wings, Jason Belmonte, your two seed. Jacob Buttruff has spent the entire week sitting there in that number one spot. Rhino Page will have the first televised role on FS1 here in 2019, your number five seed. Lefty from Orlando, Florida. Five tour titles, one major. Gotta touch it a little more. Yeah, what he means by that is you gotta catch a little bit more of it at the bottom. That ball coming in light, just tickling the one-two pocket. Rhino Page leaves the seven pin. As you see on the right side of your screen, that is strike track. As we reset the seven pin on the left lane, strike track giving us invaluable information like location, RPM, rev rate, ball speed. And we will make great comparisons no using today. that tool having three southpaws on the telecast today. Wow, so much hype to start the campaign. Rhino Page, Jesper Svensson, really no happy to enter 2019. And then we get one throw. We got ourselves <laughs> a, little, a little delay here. And now, now it sets up the 7-10. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, you want that? Yeah. You, you want that, Rhino? Is that good for you? Yeah, sweep it, man. Sweep that 7-10 out of here. <laughs> All right, something a little more attainable. Long delay gets the spare. Yes, 
Jennifer Svensson from Gothenburg, Sweden, on the west coast of that gorgeous country. Seven tour titles, one major. Zero tour titles, though, last season, but did make five televised appearances. And, and let's not forget he's only 23. Travel down the right lane. Jesper Spenson using urethane. Rhino Page using reactive resin. That is the surface on the bowling ball. Reactive resin much stronger, much more aggressive. Big early challenge for Spenson here in the first. Open frame. If you're going to have an open frame, this is the one to do it in. Yeah, it's it's okay. it, it, it's not that bad in the first. Obviously, in the tenth, not very good. If you, especially if you need one, it almost looked like he knew he was going to miss it as soon as he let go of it. <clears throat> We take a look at the overlay of the oil pattern. It's 44 feet in length, the Carmen Salvino oil pattern. Characteristic, it, slick. Yeah, it, it's real slick down lane, and all the players we spoke to yesterday said the same thing. It's all about ball speed. Patrick Allen must have written that for us. <laughs> Leaves the seven pin. You see his miles per hour, 19.4. I think Rhino Page is about two miles an hour slower. But again, the rev rate, the RPM, 573 for Jesper Svensson, 430 in comparison for Rhino Page. And there you see his Arsenal fever pitch and a very low hook rating because of it being a urethane cover stock. that one up gets his first mark page up next with an 11 pin lead <sighs> 35 year old rhino page hasn't won since the 2017 u.s open in liverpool new york of the new year. Well, he really caught that one. Remember, his first shot went a little light. He did a little self-talk and said, hey, you, you got to catch it at the bottom. For more on Rhino, here's Kimberly Presley. Thanks, Rob. Now, you guys mentioned at the top of the show how Rhino struggled in 2018. But in our interviews yesterday, he said for 2019, he has found himself a motivational quote. Now, he did share it with me, and he says he has shared it with his family and his friends, but he doesn't want to put it out there just yet. With that said, that quote must be working because for the first time in over years, he has found himself in a He's going to need to hype himself up with more than a quote after that. Shot. Not your best. A little bit faster in terms of ball speed. And it looks like wide left at the break point down lane. As you can see, that, that was right around the sixth board. Remember, 39 boards across the lane. The sixth board just inside of that first arrow on the left. Not even three frames through this one. We already have two open frames. This is uncharacteristic, and these lanes are giving Page and Spenson some early fits. That's a especially bad open for Rhino Page being on a strike. Losing that count. Spenson started with an open frame. Got a spare in the second. at 621. I think tour average is right around 440. 
And that's what you get with the two-handed style. Is there anything else he does, Randy, besides just being a quote-unquote two-handed bowler to get those RPMs up to such a level? Well, he snaps his wrist open very fast at the bottom of the swing at the release point. The only player that I know of that can get close to the two-handers in terms of RPMs while using his thumb is EJ Tackett. a double and have I mentioned that Jesper Spenson is my animal spirit a little bit a little bit you, you like the ink you I, like the I hair do. you like his attitude you like the RPMs he, he's just a great kid too but not only that he's a phenomenal talent and a lot of fun to watch can you grab me that towel please soft-spoken uh, yeah it might be but entertaining yes you know uh, very dialed into what's going on in the world Really enjoyed talking with him yesterday. It was great to see Rhino Page back as well. Page down 15. Back on the strike train. And that time, a good two boards inside of the last break point on the left lane when he left the super washout. More better. You know, the one thing I really like about Rhino Page is he's not short on confidence. Not to mention the fact that he's got a lot of talent. Both of his strikes have come there on that right lane. Nice look. As he slides over to his left. As you take a look at Rhino's arsenal today. Back to back jacks. His angle's definitely a lot tighter on that shot, and the result was perfect. Three strikes now for Page. Svensson back up. Just 23 years old. 2015 Rookie of the Year. big part of the bowling game right now this mental warfare that the pins are playing on your brain and how these guys handle it and this ball just a pinch inside and you're right Rob not a bad shot he was looking to trip the six so here's second spare Four through five frames. As expected, a tight one between two guys who are thrilled to start the new year on television. Oh, seven pin will not go down. Uh. These are the numbers that are so impressive when you watch Jesper Svensson, ball speed and RPMs. But on the long pattern, if he gets a little too fast, he can't get his ball to come around the corner hard enough and he leaves that soft seven. Second time he left that seven there on the left lane. Second time he cleans it up. Tight one in match one. Only three pins separating Page and Spenson. The conclusion of our first match next, plus some smack talk between a couple of buddies, not you and me, who might face one another today, Randy. I'd like to see that. Ooh. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com.
All right, Randy, here's how our competitors made it on today's show, courtesy of our Flow Bowling Tournament highlights. The story all week long, Jacob Buttruff. Yeah, never lower than first throughout the entire event. So that's pretty good. Jason Belmonte made a good run at that top spot, finished just barely out of it in second place. Look how far left he was there. Yeah, I needed a double, and he came away with a 2-10 split. And Jason Belmonte locks the number two seed. There's our boy Bill O'Neill, Jesper Svensson. They finished third and fourth. Some drama around that final fifth spot. Jason Sterner, a nightmare of a final game. Yeah, and you hate to see this. Jason Sterner, three splits in the last game. He was in the top five pretty much all week. Came down to the last game. Rhino Page shoots 225, and it was plenty to go around Sterner and grab the fifth and final spot. Yeah, so Rhino up there in the number five spot as we take a look at our five finalist today back to live action rhino page up looking for a triple here just three pins separating page and Spenson. take a look at our game summary strike track well the comparison is is really compelling when you look at this number right here that's just pure power uh, on Jesper Spenson's side but also take a look at the angle that's being played, how much straighter Jesper Svensson is going than Rhino Page. And when he talked about this quote that Rhino Page found to kind of motivate him through the course of the season, said, yeah, I had a little bit of a come to Jesus meeting with myself at the end of last season. Look, you're a veteran. You're on the verge of the Hall of Fame. You're better than that. That was a great shot, by the way, out of commercial. He's been tested today. A couple long delays, some breaks, and he's been able to step up. Beautiful shot here by Rhino Page, and with this strike, he takes a seven-pin lead halfway through. And more importantly, working on three in a row. I'm sorry, did you say he's working on how many in a row? Three in a row. Three in a row? Yeah. So he could have four in a row right here. He could. Really? Hmm. Easy. I'm sorry, Rob. Gosh. Come on, Rhino. Tell me about it, Rhino. You're letting everybody down. And you see his break point down lane, folks, right there. 4.8. Good effort. He's been right around the eight or ninth board at the break point. Oh, he knew it right away, huh, Randy? Absolutely. <laughs> Players can feel it as yeah. soon as it leaves their hand. And that shot there, I described that as the wet bar of soap release. It's like when that wet bar of soap just kind of squirts out of your hand. You're not a washcloth guy? No. <laughs> well, not the way he was intending to make that. No, he's staring those pins down, isn't he? Yeah, he'll, he'll take it. <laughs> Seventh frame. It's a four-pin match now. Jesper Svensson, however, needs to get on the strike train. Svensson could max out at 237, page at 231. Just two strikes in this match for Svensson. They came in the third and the fourth. over 20 miles an hour. I think that's probably uh, the equivalence of a Major League Baseball pitcher throwing at about 105, 106 miles an hour. Having me back. Yeah. That's getting down there with some bad intentions. Breaks the speed limit in most neighborhoods. Sunday night, FS1, huge super middleweight title fight coming your way. Jose Uzgatati defends his belt against undefeated Caleb Plant. I'm not sure I gave Jose uh, the correct pronunciation of his last name. It's coming your way Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, FS1, and on the Fox Sports app. Jose Uzgatagi. I think that's right. Uz Uzgatagi. Uzgatagi. My favorite middleweight of all time, Marvelous Marvin mm. Hagler. Let me tell you. This PBC on FS1 has really been a wonderful property yeah. early on. Some great sure. fights have been there. 
We've been able to add the PBC and the PBA to our Fox Sports stable over the last couple months. WWE is coming in 2019. I'm slightly excited about that. There's a foul line buzzer issue on the practice pair, which caused this quick delay. We begin the eighth. Svensson looking for a double. Yeah. And he's got it. Beauty. Oh, blew up that rack. That ball there went through the pins pretty hard. And yes, for Svensson takes a six pin lead after eight. A beautiful shot. Page down six, Bill O'Neill waiting in the wings. His fifth strike. You know, to me, it looks like Ryan's got a nice look and a good shot, nice ball reaction. All he has to do is, in the words of our newest Hall of Famer, Patrick Allen, all he has to do is pry it off. P.A., how about his speech last night? We're going to have more about P.A. and Mika Koivu Niemi as we take a look at Rhino's <clears throat> last shot. Hall of Fame induction ceremonies here. No, we got a Hall of Famer that's going to be joining us in the booth a little bit later. Don't want to give it away. Nope. But again, let's just say he's comfortable here yes. in these surroundings. He's been here once or twice. Mm. As soon as it left, go, go, go. He knew something was missing. And, and typically Soft. when a player says that, it's because they get it inside of target, and you can see it right there. That Soft. Tenth board down lane, just inside a target. And when a player says go, they want that ball to lay off and hold. Yeah. And it was the sixth thing, gets a spare. But not what he needed there in the foundation frame. No, and, and now he can be shut out without striking there in the ninth frame. If he strikes in the ninth, he can shoot 231. Even though Jesper Spenson can shoot 237, Jesper's got a much easier road to travel now. He just needs good count. One more strike and good count, and he will lock Rhino Page. Huge break. Huge break. Remember, Rhino Page gets to finish on that right lane, and Rhino's been perfect on the right lane. Jesper Spencer needs to convert the six pin and double in the tenth to advance. Look at that messenger. A little kiss. And exhale. Still got some lifting to do, though, here in the ninth. Remember the open frame, the missed spare for Jesper Stenson in the first. On the right lane. Now he slides to the left for the tenth. Five pins separating Page and Spenson. Can you see what Jesper needs to get the win? Two and six. Anything else, Ronald Page? can still win this. It's what you live for when you're a professional bowler. Moments like how challenging is this one? It's about a six or a seven. Uh. For your hammer tough spare replay and what a beaut. Just how we drew it up. Yes, for Svensson still has life. A strike here though is big because actually nine still forces Rhino Page to double. But nine also brings a tie into the picture.
He's going to bring the high hard one here. Keep it online and flush the one two straight back. with a 2-0-1. Strike spare for Rhino Page. We have a tie, and we will go to a one-ball sudden-death roll-off. If Rhino Page does not strike on this ball, Jesper Svensson will advance and take on Bill O'Neill. And trust us, Rhino knows that math. He knows exactly what he has to do right now. Remember, he's been perfect on this lane. Yeah, a good shot and a terrible break. Match is over. Jesper Svensson survives. Wow. Well, it's not what Rhino Page wanted. But he did want to get on television. He has set a tone for 2019. And some just some weird breaks. Well, this shot was certainly good enough to strike, and unfortunately, Rhino Page leaves a solid eight. The ball goes right by it. We're going to see more of Rhino this season. Absolutely. Absolutely, I guarantee it. Coming up next, though, that man, Bill O'Neill. Plus, we're going to honor last night's new Hall of Fame class. PBA Hall of Fame induction ceremony started with a tour throughout the museum. Numerous dignitaries on hand, current bowlers in the house as well. Chris Barnes, local boy. There's your master of ceremonies, the Hall of Famer, Bo Burton. More about Bo in a moment as they all collected to welcome in this year's Hall of Fame class, Patrick Allen, yeah, Hoss, Major Mika, Mika Koibu Niemi, Jim Doty, and Bob Johnson rounding out the four-man Classes, the four of them posed by their portraits. Beautiful night here in Arlington. Three of them here in attendance. Where are you, Patrick Allen? Huh? <laughs> Major Mika is sitting. You know why? You know why Patrick's not here? I just want to sit next to that left-handed killer, Mika <laughs> Koivu Niemi. Bo Burton joins us right now. Hey, number one, thank you for the really kind words last night. And always good to have you on the broadcast. Number two. There's kind of this new vibe that's palpable around the PBA right now. No doubt, Rob. First place, the comments I made about you are earned. I've never given out compliments that aren't earned. You are a top anchor in the country today. I've watched your work on Fox for the last almost 10 years that I've owned you, and you're a top drawer guy. Now, the new energy, very simple. It reminds me of when ABC television in 1962 took over the tour. And all of a sudden, we're on the network. We're making stars. There's more money for the players out here. And it's up to you guys, you and Randy, to, to really bring that to the home audience. And I'm really looking forward to your comments. We're doing our best, man. Hey, <laughs> uh, I know I know you're comfortable in the TV booth. OK. Come join us for a match, won't you? OK, I'll, I'll do I'll move Randy's side. You can sit next to me. Everything will be all right. I'll follow you. All right, good. So Bo Burton's going to join us for our second match of the day. Bill O'Neill, he's back. In front of the bright lights of TV, he's got a little man from Sweden, Mr. Svensson, in his sights next. Welcome back to Arlington, Texas, and FS1's continuing live coverage of the PBA Hall of Fame Classic. Time now for our Ebonite flashback. Let's go back to the 78 BPAA U.S. Open in beautiful Greensboro, North Carolina. Bo Burton, does this, this ring a bell? <laughs> that seven pin was a bell ringer. Man, stood there forever. Look at that stud. Like it. Whoa. Whoa. Got that, the 10 out and everything, baby. <laughs> that shirt, by the way, back in style. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good, man. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that was 1978 in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. So, uh, been a few years, but it's always fun to win a major. That's your 13th title of your PBA career. So, the stepladder bracket's starting to fill up. We're set for match number two right now. Three versus four. Bill O'Neill, Jesper Svensson, Rob Stone, Bo Burton, Randy Peterson here with you. 
Svensson will start us off. 201-198 winner over Rhino Page in our opening match. I can't wait to hear Bo's opinion on this style. What do you think of when you watch Jesper Svensson bowl, Bo? Well, Randy, it's a modern game. Uh, you and I saw it. I saw it coming actually in the 1980s when Mike Miller was the first guy to win the PBA National Championship in Toledo. He switched to the no-thumb release, which is very similar to what these guys are doing, the two-handed and the no-thumb. You just get more revolutions on it, and on synthetic lanes like all lanes are today, uh, you're better off getting some high revs. But Bill O'Neill is more conventional player. Watch this. Not near as fast a messenger as Jesper Spenson's, but still effective. Bill O'Neill, in talking with us yesterday, said the key for me today is ball speed. I got to keep my ball speed slow enough to get it to come around the corner. That time, he did, and the result was perfect. TV and back to dropping them under the lights. It's been a while since he's won a singles match. You have to go back to the 2015 PBA Oklahoma Open in Shawnee, Oklahoma. And he knows it's been a while. He was out in the wilderness for a while. Really looking forward to this opportunity to get back on television and reassert himself here on the tour. Jesper Svensson, 23 years old from Sweden. So much power. So much promise and another strike. Bo, his pins, his ball goes through the pins about as hard as me going through the front door of a Walmart on Black Friday. <laughs> Randy, you know the key to these players is, is is really the key to the pins is obviously the new bowling ball equipment we have today. But if you'll notice, all the modern players keep their elbow inside their hand at the point of release. And that's where a player gets the accuracy and the leverage, and especially with Bill O'Neill. You watch him. If he gets that hand going around early, Randy, you know what happens. The elbow goes out. It's a bucket or a week 10. Yep. Svensson going for three in a row. Oh, Nothing but strikes here in match two. And, Bo, when you talk about power, this is a number that I always like to look at. <laughs> Good, coming off your hand, but it looked a pinch right. How did it look from you? Uh, for me, as, as pure as I could throw it. Um, not ashamed at all of it. And In fact, last night with our reps and a couple friends, we were laughing because I said, I can't stone an eight. I don't have the rev rate to do that. And what do I do today? I stone an eight. So I guess there's hope for me after all. Yeah, I think uh, you and Randy need to have a talk about that stone eight. Yeah, let, let's not, please. <laughs> For what it's worth, I remember Randy lost the national championship with a stone eight to uh, a guy named Schlegel, who we haven't heard much of since. Turing Players Championship. But, but thanks for remembering, Bo. Close enough. I thank you, and my psychiatrist thanks yeah. you. Folks love to remind you of that moment, don't they, Randy? Yes, Rob. To keep it even. We are a heartbeat away from a 7-10. A little something unusual here, Randy, that you see all the time. We talk about the carry oil or the uh, down on the right side, but since there hasn't been any right-handers, you kind of see it in Svensson's shot right here with this soft seven, the carry down of the oil. Well, you're, and you're going to see more carry down on the left because two of the, of the three left-handers are using urethane, and the urethane balls push oil towards the head pin. The reactive balls absor absorb the oil. <laughs> that Jesper Svensson uses. He does not use reactive resin. There's two solutions, obviously. If, you, if you're the bowler at home, if you're leaving, especially right-handers, leaving the soft 10 after striking, you can either move a little bit more to the right, get a little more angle, or you can saw it up, put a little more revs on it. So uh, we'll see what Svensson does. Uh, we got a tight match going here. A lot different from the first match where nerves had to be playing a, a part in both players. Folks, 
strike on that left lane for Svensson. There's that big rev rate I was talking about, Bo, that's 650 and almost 20 miles an hour. As a comparison, Randy, because um, I'm really not attuned to all that stuff, what were the rev rates for somebody like me who was a medium player, some like Bill O'Neill's? Well, Bill O'Neill's about 450 to 470, so... Yeah, I would be around 120, right? You'd be probably around four. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> Messenger there in the fifth. Swing around on this lane. A little slower. Yep, and you heard it. Yeah, and his slower. key, staying slow. Staying, keep staying slow, keep the inside el elbow in inside the hand, which yep. gives you a little more leverage, a little more tip at the back end. Uh, Bill O'Neill practiced the 10 pin about 15 times in the practice lane before we went on the air. Let's see what happens here. You saw Bill Zarsno using a chaos for a strike ball. <laughs> Bill's not trying to make too much about being back on television, but he knows how important it is to his career, not just in the short term, but the long term. A victory today, Bo makes him eligible for the Hall of Fame. Ten victories. And Bill O'Neill, Rob, as you well know, has the kind of style that would have played well in the 50s, 60s, 70s. He has a style that will last a long time. Once he gets his confidence back, you can watch for him to be on your telecast quite often. And I think the confidence is back, and it's showing it here in match number two. And there's another strike. How come nobody's mentioned anything about Bill O'Neill's glasses? Those are new. Looks good. Hey, he's seeing things perfectly today, Absolutely. no doubt about it. The strike track comparison of our second match and the conclusion of Svensson and O'Neill next on FS1. A lot of strikes here so far in our second match of the PBA Hall of Fame Classic. Svensson looking at him live right now, down 10 to Bill O'Neill. We take a look at our strike track comparison, Randall. Again, Jesper Svensson in that 20 mile an hour range, but you can see how much slower Bill O'Neill is throwing it. And obviously the difference in the rev rate, Bill O'Neill uses his thumb. But I, the thing that I like about Bill O'Neill is his ball speed has been very consistent. He's been in the 18s with every single shot and his fastest speed or the biggest difference has only been 0.5 miles an hour. So extremely accurate out of his hand and a great control of ball speed for Bill O'Neill. Decent sized commercial break, Bo, which always meant something to you when you were born. You know what I did? It, it, it usually, when you had a long commercial break, players had a tendency, and I just studied it from the announcements, to cook a little bit high. Now, today's players throw a little bit harder. Maybe that isn't it, but I would bet, if anything, Svensson would leave a six pin if he doesn't strike. Or a seven pin. Well, I don't count as well as Six I Six or seven, they're really <laughs> close. <laughs> a, a point that Randy made, and we did a study back in uh, Windsor Locks, Connecticut years ago at the U.S. Open, Randy. Bradley and, Bowl. And Bradley Bowl. And the average winning speed for the winter tour that season was 18.2 miles an hour. And that's with rubber balls. So Bill O'Neill is right on the winning speed of champions 30 years ago. That's great stuff. Second straight nine score on that right lane for Spencer. Yeah. Uh, another seal at the store to win it. And I don't know. I, I don't know what he said because I can't oh, yeah. translate <laughs> Swedish. Swedish, but that last shot uh, really meant a lot to Jesper Svensson because he could have pulled this match even. Right now he's ten down. O'Neill's working on a strike. And Jesper Svensson looking to get back on that same train. And psychologically, it's a lot tougher, Randy. You know when the players are all striking. You don't figure they're going to miss. So let's see what Svensson does here. <laughs> so O'Neill pops up. His right lane has been full of messengers. A lot of love being shown to Billy on this right lane. There's the first one. Had been going to the sidewall and sending the 10 pin to concussion protocol. 
Watch yeah. the inside of his right elbow. See if he keeps it inside his hand. That he did. The ball finishes, Randy. Well, he threw it slower, and he gnawed on that one at the bottom of the swing. I mean, he really got a handful there. And he's still in that 18 mile an hour range. That's a, a range to keep good balance, good stroke, and you can see that with Bill right here. Look at the hand going straight up the back of the ball. And so many amateurs think you have to turn your hand around the ball to make it curve, and you just don't. It, the more you go around it, you're absolutely right. From six o'clock to four o'clock, you're actually killing it. Yeah. Good players like yourself, Mark Roth, we used to study, come from eight o'clock up to six o'clock. Correct. And your tournament leader is the guy you can really see that with. Yep. Danny O'Neill just continues to string these strikes together. His good buddy Jason Belmonte waiting in the wings. Will those two travel partners be colliding in our next match? Bill O'Neill, yeah, he is feeling it today in Arlington. And boy, I use a phrase, pros work the inside part of the ball, amateurs work the outside part. And Bill O'Neill is one of the best at working the inside. Absolutely. I just said it in a different way. The inside of the elbow keeps your hand inside the ball. So it's a good swing thought for amateurs to try to hit their target with the inside of their elbow instead of their hand. Yep. Needs it. Another seven pin for Jesper Stenson. Uh, On that right lane. There's your story right now. Yeah. Back to back to back. Seven pins. Randy, you think that's the uh, urethane ball just not digging through enough? I think that at the start of this game, his urethane ball was finishing a little bit harder. And as the game progressed, he was pushing oil down the lane. And now it's too soft. And there's not enough bang in the back part of the lane. So Bill O'Neill in great position to move on to match number three, where he would take on the number two seed, Jason Belmonte. Fair to say, Kimberly, they have a bit of a history with one another? They absolutely have a history. You know, the last time we saw these two on a TV show together, they were winning the doubles championship. So, Jason, you were coming up next. Have you been watching any of this? Because it is a battle out there. Yeah, it's it's pretty close. I mean, Jesper's had a couple of seven pins on that right lane. Billy's bowled a really, really good game, which is nice to see for him. But... Um, you know, if Jesper can strike out, it's going to force Billy to, you know, show up in the ninth and tenth. Well, I know that uh, you guys are roommates, and we talked about how good friends that you are, but how do you change from cheering your friend on here to wanting to beat him in the next match? Yeah, I mean, I, the way that I approach all of my matches, whoever I'm playing against is really just a, a shadow. I don't really know who they are. I don't care who they are. I have a, a job and a responsibility on the lanes that only I can control. All right, thanks so much, Jason. Good luck to you. Oh, did he just call Bill O'Neill a shadow? <laughs> I noticed when I walked in this building, Rob Stone, that Jason Belmonte had a game face on to practicing and never got rid of it. Yeah, you know who else had that game face? His good buddy, Bill O'Neill. And it's looking more and more like those two are going to duel next. 40 pin lead. He needs to keep it on the lane and stay behind the foul line with decent count. He doesn't even need a mark in the tenth. And He's going to take on his tour roommate, Jason Belmonte. You know, Rob, one of the hard things that you and Randy have in the announce booth that Shankle and I didn't have is the abundance of strikes. I know people like to see them, but you get games that are separated. They're not like that first game. First game was 1965 vintage, where 10th frame was yeah. done. This game's almost locked up. The guy's going to shoot 240 or 50. It's it didn't right. make it's any okay. difference. So, it's all right. Um, Good bowling, but not a close match. And O'Neill is safe, and he is through to our third match. Let's take on his good buddy, Jason Belmonte. Bobert, always a pleasure to Thank see you. you. What a way to start 2019. Woo! Well, I'm happy you with us. Thank, Thank you very much. And Randy and I have been friends for 30-some years. Rob, well, I've watched your career. And I'm looking forward to seeing this every week at the same time, hopefully, on Fox Sports. By the way, that invite to join you in Florida with my family, it's still on, right? You bet. Okay, good. Bo Burton, thank you for joining us. Coming up next, the man many consider the face and the best player in the world, Jason Belmonte. For an unbeatable low price, both pair for just $19.99. Don't wait. Get your special ops today. To order, call 1-800-798-1249. That's 1-800-798-1249, or you can go online at hdspecialops.com.
Don't delay. Call or click today. You see banners adoring things here in Arlington, Texas, as we welcome you back to our continuing live coverage of the PBA Hall of Fame Classic. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson here with you every week on the PBA telecast. We're going to have a GoBowling.com question or theme or subject, and our subject is going to be banners. And you have a banner. It's a I, banner you earned. How did I, you get it, and why did you pick it? Well, I got this uh, for winning a title. And uh, every time you win... Uh, or every time there's a first-time winner, you get to choose your your colors of your banner, and it hangs at every event that you compete in. And it's there until you decide to retire and, and leave the tour. And so that's how I was and able to... And you get to, to pick the colors. Yeah. You and you went with black and gold. Yeah. Uh, I, I No, I didn't lose a bet. I, I just like the colors. I think they stand out. Um, I've always liked the Pittsburgh Steelers there colors. There you go. Um, even though I'm a diehard L.A. Rams fan. So uh, it just I just like the, the color combo. Looks good. Thanks. All right. Take a look at our updated, updated stepladder here for you. Spenson won game one but got run by Bill O'Neill in match number two. So up next, Belmo taking on Bill O'Neill, a really intriguing two versus three matchup. Jason Belmonte really kind of the face of bowling these days and clearly a player of the year candidate as well. We get to see him for the first time here in 2019 in our next match. But before we go to break, we'd like to say goodbye to a good friend of ours. Dennis Ryan passed away suddenly last week at the age of 60. Dennis, a multi-Emmy award winning audio engineer, was primarily recognized for his work on NASCAR, also offered his expertise and his friendship to us here on the Bowling Tour. Dennis, thank you, and you will be missed. Just outside our facility here, the AT&T Stadium, home of Dallas Cowboys. Had a big win last night. They did. How good, by the way, have our friends at the NFL on Fox been to the PBA? Uh, tremendous. How about I mean, that? the, the pregame show a couple yeah, weeks ago, right? they bowled yep. in the studio yep. ahead of our first telecast, and then last night? Yeah, our, the promo last night in the fourth quarter with about 25 or 30 million people watching, and the PBA gets a promo. Uh, shout out to, to Mr. Buck and Mr. Aikman for, uh, for doing that for us, and everybody at Fox. Wow, it was awesome. <laughs> Well, we haven't seen that. Now, Bill O'Neill hasn't missed a pocket yet today. And uh, what's going to be interesting to watch in this again, match Corpin. is what Jason Belmonte does to this oil pattern and how it affects Bill O'Neill. Every weekday morning, Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp, they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, head head-to-head, covering the day's hottest sports topics. Y you think... Skip's going to talk about the Cowboys tomorrow? Yes. Champ? Yes. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to meet Skip when I was uh, oh, yeah? when I was in L.A. for my Fox visit. Did you meet him at the gym? I met him uh, uh, just outside his dressing room. <laughs> Don't never look Skip in the eye. He was very cordial. Now he's great. He was very nice. Undisputed Skip and Shannon, weekdays, 9.30 a.m. to noon Eastern, only on FS1 in the Fox Sports app. How about this crowd stepping up right now? Jason Belmonte. Well, it, it's because it's Jason Belmonte. Native of Australia. Flew here on New Year's Day. Quick rest. Hit the lanes. Well, well, well. Where have we seen that before? Bill O'Neill's first shot replicated by his good buddy Belmo. And this is what makes these players so great is the adjustments that they make. How far up on the approach Jason Belmonte has moved just to lower his ball speed. ago Belmo won his first ever PBA title you and I were there yeah on Strong Island 
took down Bill O'Neill, took down Mike Fagan yeah. as well, the Rat Pack. You know, Fagan somewhere in Indianapolis area right now, watching his two buddies bowl. Happy New Year to Mike Fagan, his family. Family growing, by the way. Yes. Very expecting. Congrats, Mike. Not the start Belmo thought he would be seeing here in 2019. Look at the angle that uh, Strike Track is showing you on the right side of your screen. And there. Just this big sweeping hook of Jason Belmonte. But in order to do that on a 44 foot pattern, he has to throw it slow enough. That last shot rolled out. Does he need to ratchet it down a little bit more? Well, it, it, it depends on, on what his hand does at release. So that last shot, he was more up the back. There was a little more end over end roll, but it also caused the ball to stop when it got to the head pin. A little less speed and maybe a little more side rotation to get it to come around the corner. Last time out, Bill O'Neill, nine strikes, a 258. Today's high score so far. Sweep him. Come on. Come on. Stay down. It's solid. And Billy talked to us about some of the things he's been working on with Dad. Dad built his coach. Quite his left arm down. Stay more compact at the start. A little more compact push away. You know Bill Sr.'s watching this back home outside Philly right now, don't you? Absolutely. He's probably got a couple of the grandkids running around with him. Yep. He had to take uh, Bill's oldest, his son Gavin, to uh, bowling league yesterday. Gavin's almost six. It's his second year in the league. No bumpers, averages close to 100. Good job, Gavin. I, odds are we're going to see Gavin out here at some point down the road. Pretty good genes, right? Yeah, certainly. So Bill O'Neill takes a seat. Exhale. Belmo up here to start his effort in the third. I love his kind of pre-shot ritual. It's this calmness. It's the foot up. It's bring yourself to a nice, happy, zen-type place. Look how far up on the approach he's starting. Little baby steps to the foul line. He gets his first strike here in match number three. Jacob Butruff, your number one seed, waiting in the wings. You know, the other advantage to the two-handed style, as we take a look at the man who made it popular, is pin carry. Watch the six slap the ten silly. Bang. Belmo's three ball arsenal today. That needs help. Did not find the pocket. The... You need to wake up, buddy. Errant shot. Look at the break point down lane. Right there. There's nobody been that far to the right and has gotten it back. That's why we call it OB on this oil pattern. You just can't get it that far right. Seven, eight board right. max. Maybe six. Anything outside of that, and the ball's going to hydroplane. Cleans it up, though. Yeah, it's a good cover. He's going to take a seat and think about this one. 11 pin lead for Bill O'Neill, who steps up. Looking to make it three in a row. His lone major, the 2010 U.S. Open. The big story about Bill O'Neill, this is his first singles TV appearance since... 2015 when he won in Oklahoma and when you and I were together in stint number one we saw Bill regularly yeah whether he was on TV or not he was always in contention mm -hmm. and then he dropped off and, and then he did what most great players do is you start searching and you start chasing your tail and Billy 
did the exact same thing, tried to change certain things in his game that were unnat unnatural. And now he's back to doing what Bill O'Neill does best. That's a beautiful shot. Get down, 10! Get down! Come on, let me get some of that, too. Oh, boy, Billy, work that crowd. By the way, we're in Oklahoma next week live. You bring a sign to Oklahoma, you're getting on television. That is my guarantee to you, the PBA family. How about that love tap on the 10? He's been getting a lot of little love with those 10s today. Well, he didn't get a whole lot last year. He finished six just about every other week. It's about time he caught a break or two. We were talking about this fact that he was kind of in, in no man's land. It, and it wasn't for weeks. It wasn't for months. It was for years. Jason Belmonte is really struggling today. Oh, better off your hand. A lot of down lane motion for Jason Belmonte. Look at that right foot, how it's sideways going into the foul line right before the slide. Asked Belmo yesterday if he had any New Year's resolutions. Kind of looked at me, he's like, I don't, I don't do that. Why, mm -hmm. why would I wait till New Year's to make a resolution? If there's something wrong, something needs to be changed, just do it. Yeah. Kind of encompasses his approach to everything in life right now. I mean, he, he is a brand. He's one of the few brands out there on the PBA Tour right now. Yeah, he's a marketing machine. And rightfully so. He's earned it. Yep. And people want to be associated with him. Mm-hmm. And by the way, he backs it up on the lane. Yep. There we go. That's the goal that we know. Well, he's going to need a bunch of those because... I don't see any let up in Bill O'Neill. Is Bill O'Neill's working on a, a what, Rob? He's got a hand bone, my friend. Bill O'Neill strikes in the second, third, fourth, and fifth frames. He's got a 32 pin lead over his good buddy, Jason Belmonte. Lead halfway through. Let's take a look at the move that Bill O'Neill has made since his first match against Jesper Spence, and that's right around 12 and a half, 13th board. Here we are a game and a half later, and you can see just how much transition has occurred as Bill's moved almost a good five boards left at the arrows. The hands go up, but he gets bailed out as the 10 dropped late. Bill, he beat Svensson by 39 pins in our last match, dropped nine strikes. He now has a commanding 32-pin lead over one of his best friends in the world, Jason Belmonte. Surges to 42. It's always a good sign when you're tripping tens late, kicking the 10 out like that. You know, the pins, they always know and react based on how well the ball comes out of your hand. We believe that as players. When you have the good touch and the good feel going, the pins react properly. Since that opening nine spare to start things off, it's been nothing but strikes for the seven time member of Team USA. Nice to have things go your way, and right now, things are going Man, are they? The, way, the right I way mean, for O'Neal. I mean, those 10 pins today for That's him crazy. are resilient, mean, nasty, but in the end, Bill wins, and 10 pin goes down. Belmo has got a lot to make up. Down 52. Back-to-back -back jacks for the Australian. Well, he knows his only chance now is to strike out and shoot 248. And then hope for some help from his... Can I take a re-rack, please, John? His buddy O'Neill. Jason taking a re-rack. There's several reasons why players do take a re-rack. Pins are off spot or a player just wants to buy a little more time. Brady, coming up next year on FS1, a great college hoops matchup. Seton Hall and DePaul. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern. DePaul so improved. Seton Hall 
Let me tell you, that's a program that should be ranked. Kevin Willard has done a wonderful job with those Pirates. No, 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 no. Miles it's Powell, done, Player of the Year candidate. Miles Kale on the court with him as well. When's the last time Kale entered your Thanks. digestive system? Uh, it, I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I mean, take a look at this body. Kale is not no. real high in my priority list. My priority list or food list. Belmo looking for three in a row. Really needs a string. Big time strikes here to make it close. That looked like it was inside. My goodness. <sighs> looked inside the whole way. And he pays for it. Bill O'Neill is going to advance to the title match. You want dinner if I spare it? Ooh. Ooh, I like it. A little wager downstairs. Yeah, he just gave that that uh, right, that bet to I make it. Bill O'Neill. I miss I buy you dinner. Dinner on the line. What do you got, Belmo? You know, it's funny you talk about how Belmo and, and Bill are, are good friends, but if you ask Bill, Bill will tell you that he's Belmo's only friend. <laughs> That's the sign of true friendship, right? <laughs> Throw him down the gutter. <laughs> All right, for dinner. You're buying, Belmo. Make it a good place, Billy. Ruth Chris. All right, now Billy's Ruth Chris. Did you hear Ruth him? Chris? <laughs> uh, now, O'Neill, he, all he's looking for is to maintain pocket, follow transition, and make sure he stays lined up for the title match against Jacob Buttruff. Strike train continues for Billy O. Head on over to PBA.com. You can check out all the latest officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise. We got the new Chasing 300 t-shirt, host of other unique designs out there. Get shopping today. Head on over to PBA.com. Click on the Shop PBA link on the main menu. Randy, is that uh, a t-shirt with your face on it still available? You know? it, it is. Is it? Because I need go, one. Go to PBA.com. You can get one. It's... Honestly, it brings great joy to my face when I see people wearing the Randy Peterson t-shirt. I have a discount code you can use. You know, you, you, as, as you watch this unfold... Come on, man, let the shadow win by 100. <laughs> oh, I love this smack talk. This is gorgeous. Let the Keep it going, Billy. Let the shadow win by 100. <laughs> if you don't get that reference, we interviewed <laughs> Belmo. <laughs> during the last game. And look, he said, look, you know, Billy and I are good friends, but let's be honest, wh whoever I'm bowling against, I just look at them as a shadow. I don't see them as friends or foes. They're just an entity out there. I got to take care of my own business. Yeah, here's it. Here's the deal. Uh, if Belmonte goes spare strike in the 10th, he shoots... can I take my second re-rack, please? <laughs> He's taking a re-rack. What are we doing He's this for, He's 100 back. That's, yeah, <laughs> look at that's the hilarious. Second re-rack, please. Uh, we got commercials to run here, Belmo. Bench a little. Oh, my... This is hysterical. So, uh, spare strike, he shoots 190. Billy O'Neill can strike out to shoot 290. How many times do you get to say, hey, I, I beat Bill Monty by on, on TV by 100? It's going to be by more than 100. Yeah, just walk Unless away. he converts. Just walk away. Billy O is moving on to your title match. It is all over, but the shouting coming up next. Your number one seed, a guy who's been number one, Randy, all week long. And wait till you check out the wrist action on Jacob Buttruff. Welcome back to FS1's live coverage of the 2019 PBA Hall of Fame Classic here from the International Training and Research Center in Arlington, Texas. Beautiful facility, home of Team USA. If you are a bowling fan, you gotta get yourself here to this museum. And here's today's Columbia 300 fun fact. The Bowling Museum and Hall of Fame has been located here since 2010. 18,000 square foot facility preserves and exhibits the 5,000 year history of the sport of bowling. The most recent exhibit opened just yesterday, features items on loan from your 2019 PBA Hall of Fame class, an impressive facility that no true bowling fan should ever miss. Uh, here in Arlington, Texas, you know, we're at the bowling campus, so to have the International Museum and Hall of Fame here is just an awesome part of the industry. And uh, for a casual fan to come through, you'll see the history of bowling, how it started all the way through to today. And um, great artifacts, great storytelling, uh, interactive 
Uh, it's just an awesome place if you're any kind of bowling fan at all to come to. Hall of Famer Mike Albee, our title match up next. Last year, the number one seed in singles stepladder finals went just nine and eight. Jacob Buttruff, being the number one guy, knows it is far from a guarantee that hardware is in your future. We start our final match next on FS1. Bill O'Neill. Yeah, it's been a while. Jacob Butruff, I see you, number one seed. We are ready for our first title match of 2019 and the first ever live PBA event on FS1. It's the 2019 PBA Hall of Fame Classic, and we are ready for our championship match. Butruff versus O'Neill. O'Neill clearly with the experience advantage, but Butruff is a borderline freak of nature. Yeah, he really is. I mean, some of the stuff that he does with his wrist, you just don't teach to anyone. And he's going to have his hands full, though, with Bill O'Neill, who uh, goes 258, 268, first two. And Billy has been nearly perfect, has not missed the pocket in two games. Oh, great jinx. And since we had him in the booth, I might as well use it. The Bo Burton kiss of death I just gave Bill O'Neill right there. Again, first frame is where you, where you have your problems. This is the place to do it. But we have not seen that at all. All we've seen has been strikes from Bill O'Neill. 17 strikes already. This, by far, his most challenging effort of the afternoon. 2 4 eight, 10 not easy. 2 4 eight, no 10 it looked like he threw that pretty good, too, Rob. And, and as a player, you never want to see that. When you get one out of your hand that you really like and you get six, that's never a good sign. Jacob Buttruff, the 24-year-old from Tempe, Arizona, averaged a 238 this week. That includes a 138 that he dropped out of nowhere on Saturday. So he's doing the striking now instead of O'Neill. This guy has been your leader essentially from the get-go here in Arlington. His track technique, as we take a look at his approach, it's very uncommon, very unorthodox, but look what he does right here. The moment of truth. Amateurs, folks at home that watch in, in Bull League, try to get your hand in that position there. Good luck. Actually, you probably need to sign a waiver to try to get your hand in that position. <laughs> Leaves the seven pin. He says he's double jointed in the wrist area. Yeah. We, we looked at his forearms yesterday. Usually there's a difference. Usually there's a huge difference uh, in professional bowlers. The uh, the throwing hand, the forearm is going to be twice as big uh, as the offhand. In Jacob's case, both forearms are identical. But it's the wrist and what he does with it and how he can support that ball. Look out. Whiff! An air ball! Huh. And Jacob, usually a pretty good spare shooter, but not that time. And Bill O'Neill takes a one pin lead. How about that? And, and Jacob walks away. I mean, he, he just walked in front of our booth, and he is going to recollect himself literally in our viewing path. Real good title match average there, as you see Bill O'Neill. Six and five with a 232 average title matches. Wayne Wright. Fast, aggressive, and wide of target. Come on. Is it the guys or is it the lanes right now? Well, right. anytime you see this number here where it gets outside of six, it's never getting back. Now, it looks like it might just be kind of an adrenaline thing. Bill's going for a title for the first time in three and a half years. And that shot there looked uh, overly aggressive. He's tried to stay real soft and slow all day long. He's done a great job of that up until the title match. Able to clean that one up. 
right. Oh, this is interesting. You, you go back to our opening yeah. match, Page versus Fenton. This is slug. Just what, not, now, a, keep in mind, he did leave a 2 for 8 10 Let's in the first round. Going a little bit. Come on. Three shots in a row now. Two wide right, one errant in the first, and Bill O'Neill just leaves the head pick. <laughs> This is mental warfare right now. Things are even. Right right O'Neal's got to get his legs up underneath him and shake the nerves. Because right now he's a little too jacked. This bowl. And you heard him just say it right there. This just bowl. Butter bowling, third frame. He's kind of breezed through this, right? A 39 pin win and then an 82 point win over Belmo. It was loose, it was fun, it was smiles, it was happy to be back on TV. Now he's in a title fight. And there's one thing that Jacob Buttrup's known for out here, and that's throwing a lot of strikes. That's his second of the title match. First commercial break coming up in moments, and these two guys are going to sit down, and their heads are going to be doing a lot of talking. I think, I think probably more so for Bill O'Neill than Jacob Buttrup. Especially if Jacob strikes on this ball. This is his fourth time as a number one seed in a televised stepladder final. He's one and two in those matches. All even after three. All right, good shot. Yeah, it looked like he gave it a little more risk there, Rob, if that's even humanly possible. Um, after leaving that soft seven, in the second frame and that's the tendency is to try to get the ball to finish harder remember his last spare opportunity on the left lane in the second frame he missed the seven pin this time he's going after the six well 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 we got ourselves a title match don't we Things even through three and a half. This Mudruff, match. the unorthodox approach. And Bill O'Neill's struggles. Who will prevail? The title determined next. The PBA on Fox is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. Beautiful day here in Arlington, Texas. We're just, uh, what, do you, what do you say, about an eighth of a mile away, tops from AT&T Stadium? Yeah, it's like a three-wood. Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> three-wood for you. <laughs> uh, you know who loves that stadium? Jacob that Butler. Guy, Jacob Butler, yeah. huge Dallas Cowboy fan. He said, I am going to be highly distracted during the Hall of Fame ceremony last night. Of course, the Cowboys' big win mm -hmm. over Seattle. His favorite all-time Cowboy? Troy Aikman. Troy Aikman. Take a look at the comparisons. Jacob Butcher, real consistent. Look at his lines. But remember last game and how tight Bill O'Neill's line, lines were? Look at this right here. You cannot get the ball to that area and get it back to the pocket. Bill yeah. O'Neill's got to migrate in. It looks like more of an early hurricane tracker, exactly. right? It could go anywhere. It could exactly. go left. It could go west. It could hit this city or that city right. rather than pinpointed in where it was earlier on. Here's O'Neill in the fourth. <laughs> Looking for his first strike in the title match. Instead, he's got a 7-10. Well, just a, an awful break. A, a pretty good shot. Looked like he tried to tighten his lines up a little bit. Only three times in history on television has the 7-10 been converted. Open frame for it. Yeah, you, you saw Billy carry those messengers the last game and and then roll that 10 pin late that kind of the nudger that went and, and he's he's getting all these breaks and and he got it, it's kind of as a player you sit back and you wonder how long is that going to last and I, and I remember the last match too is saying in my head like save some strikes right, right don't, don't blow them all out exactly. you, you've already run over Belmo and, and sure enough he started this game shaky finally gets to the pocket started 17 out of 20 and now he's over the last five but he's still in it top of the fifth o'neill get on that strike train kid well he made a ball change there rob and that's a veteran move for you there in the fifth frame after two opens through four 
He says, I'm going to make a ball change. Real quick, let's go down. Kimberly with Billy's buddy, Belmo. Thanks, Rob. So, uh, Jason, you're watching this game. Things have changed quite a bit for Bill O'Neill. He had seven or eight strikes in the last match, and he's struggling right now. What do you see happening with his game? Yeah, I don't think he's bowled his best shots, but now the lanes have kind of transitioned just a little bit for him where he's had to change his angles to the front. I just saw him make a ball change, which looked uh, a lot smoother for him. Hopefully he throws some good shots coming down the stretch. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. No Guys? No, Belmo talking about the lanes starting to change. That guy destroys lanes. He does it during matches. He also does it during practice. Which guy? Buttruff? Oh, yeah, well, that urethane ball with 500 grit on it, it's so urethane does to an oil pattern the complete opposite of what reactive resin does. It beats up the front part of the lane and then drags oil to the head pin. Seven pin stance. The only thing keeping this close is the left lane in Jacob Butcher. He leaves that, that soft seven in the second, whiffs it, then he leaves a six pin, and now it's a ringing seven. All around strikes. He missed that seven pin in the second frame. <laughs> that is a mock celebration, my friends. 13 pin difference between Buttruff and O'Neill. Buttruff by 13, O'Neill bowling. So we'll see if O'Neill stays with that ball change on the right lane. Looks like he is going to stay with that. Now, here's the thing. A strike here in the sixth and seventh. O'Neill takes the lead. Working off his lone strike of the championship match. Great execution back-to-back. -back. Can he make it three in a row? You know, that that's the, the difference between a future Hall of Famer and uh, a player that's maybe won once or twice, and that's it for their career. Bill O'Neill makes this change in the fifth frame. He did it because of the experience that he has under the bright lights and on the biggest stage in professional bowling. He committed to it, and then he executed. Nine tour titles, but hasn't won on TV in singles competition since 2015. That is a massive drought for a guy of this talent. Come on! That's the one he had to have. He got it wide of target. It got back, and it struck. The real deal is back. And he's back with three in a row. As it's determined look. Well, he knew the value of that one. And pressure moves from the O'Neill camp to the Buttruff team. He's been perfect on this lane. First, third, and fifth, all strikes on the right lane. Four for four on the right lane, but to the left, which has caused him some issues. We'll have a lead change if he does figure out the left lane, Rob, and strikes here in the eighth. To take another look at his trajectory and break point. 16 at the arrows, about eight at the break point. hands down almost kind of pressing to the floor felt he might have been a little wide right but that is four in a row for O'Neal seems like he's got his confidence back and he's starting to figure out left and right a disastrous opening four frames for O'Neal you see it right there and then it gets cleaned up by nothing but strikes if O'Neill takes it off the sheet, ninth and 10, he wins. Max score 235 for O'Neill, 228 Buttrop. A little grabby on that one and got it inside a target, and he knows it. 
Bucks going to need some help from Buttruff now. Because Buttruff can get up in the ninth and tenth and shut out O'Neal. Talk about a back and forth match. First things first, cover the 3 6 10. And another nice break for O'Neill. Keeps him alive. Come on. I know. Bill O'Neill leads by four gifts. Look, he's earned these breaks. These without are not gifts. No, without question. A strike in the ninth, a strike in the tenth, and good count. And he shuts out Bill O'Neill. Like he lost his footing at the at the uh, foul line, and really never let go of it. And again, Bill O'Neill can now shut out Jacob Butcher in the tenth. So max score for Butcher with a conversion 206. Bill O'Neill 212. And now it's really open. That is unbelievable. Inexplicable. Second time you missed that this week. At this level, with so much on the line, you whip a single pin spare and then you miss the 4 7. Jacob Butcher can probably remember or count on one hand how many times he's done that. Two Obviously. open frames yeah. in a game. Well, two. For your number per one seed. Two pretty easy spares. And, and, and a guy who steamrolled through this yeah. competition this week in Arlington yeah. was never out of the number one seed yeah. spot. But he had so much time to sit and think yeah. and watch today and think about it last night. Well, and, and if you look at his game, he could have easily had the front eight. The struggles on the left lane. He could have had the, the first eight strikes in a row, Rob, when you go back and look at seven pin, six pin, seven pin. But instead, his max score now, 194. Bill O'Neill is going to capture title number 10 if he stays behind the foul line and gets good count. Unless Jacob Butcher strikes here. This will force O'Neill to mark. Wait, take the seven. Jacob did go to a reactive ball on the left lane only, and he made that change a couple of frames ago. I believe in the eighth, he went to that ball there. So he'll be in the 190s with good count. O'Neill, he needs a mark, any kind of mark. He punches his ticket to the Hall of Fame. So Jacob's day done with a 1-9-4. Bill O'Neill has not won a singles title since 2015. A 10th tour title makes him eligible for the Hall of Fame. All of those riding on this shot. How many times have we seen the messenger just nail the 10 pin today from Billy O? That time it went in front, but a spare, keep it on the lane, O'Neal wins. <laughs> the drought is over, and the Hall of Fame is on line one. Congrats, Billy O. You're back, baby. You know, with all the breaks well, that we up. saw Billy get Make today, let's Make not forget up. all of the adversity that he's Make faced. Losing his mother, Marianne, in August. A second child. Lots of stuff going on at home. But you kind of got a sense that his mom was shining down on Bill O'Neill today. Yeah, and Bill's dad, no sooner. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations to the whole O'Neill family. Christy, enjoy it. Gavin, Avery, Daddy's done good.
Coming, kid. Ladies and gentlemen, it's great the 2019 to have you back. NBA Hall of Fame Classic champion, Bill O'Neill. Yeah. It's for you, Mom. I love you. Thank you, Hammer. Thank you, Vice. Thank you, KR. Thanks for believing in me. Bill, very emotional win for you here today. First time you've won in over three years. It also makes you Hall of Fame eligible. But we talked about it yesterday, and I see you're getting a little mm -hmm. emotional here. You said that uh, your mom passed in August, Marianne, and yeah. I'm so sorry. Condolences Thank to you, you and the family. But you said that she tells you things every once in a while, and you got a 300 coming in here, and she, you said that she says to you, I don't need to watch it anymore. You did a good job. What do you think she'd say to you? with this one well i know what she would have said to me before i got to shoot that 10 pen and she would have said billy don't choke this please please make this <laughs> and you absolutely did tell me about the emotions that come with this win uh I mean, it's, it's, it's so many things uh being hall of fame eligible um at the hall of fame classic is is pretty cool um just knowing i have my whole my whole family um watching at home is awesome it's for you, Dad. I love you, Dad. Congratulations, Dad. Rainy, not gonna lie, I'm pretty happy right now. Yeah. I mean, we, we're, we're big Bill O'Neill fans here in the booth. And I am just so happy that drought is over and I am thrilled for the O'Neill household. We are back with you live, Randy, next Sunday in Oklahoma. The PBA Oklahoma Open coverage 11 a.m. Eastern right here again live on FS1. It's also streaming live all season long on the Fox Sports app. The drought is long gone. His first singles title win since 2015. An emotional Bill O'Neill getting the hardware. We're off to Oklahoma, where we'll see you next week. But coming up next, some great biggies. Toops, Jeff Levering and Tariq Turner with Seton Hall.